So, you want to be a reseller? You're doing the research and you've watched tons of YouTube videos and you've got this whole thing boiled down to three easy steps. Step one, go to a yard sale or thrift store and find valuable items. Step two, take pictures of those items and list them on eBay. Step three, profit. While you're right, those are the basic steps. There's a whole lot more that goes into it. If you ask any reseller, they're going to tell you that there's at least one thing they wish they knew before they started. So today, I'm going to share real advice from real resellers. I promise you're going to learn something or your money back. Stay tuned. So a few months ago, I made this post on Instagram and I asked other resellers if there's something that they wish they knew before they started. And honestly, I got back some great responses. The first one I'm going to share with you is from Casey. And his advice is to sell what you like sourcing. While this is not technical advice, it's very important. If you're just starting out, you really need to sell what you love and what you love looking for. More than likely, if you love something, you're gonna have a built-in knowledge about it and you're gonna be ahead of most. Also, if you're out looking for items that you don't like, you're gonna burn out quickly. For me, it's glassware and trinkets. I know there's a ton of money in them, but I just can't get into it. If you told me I could only source that type of item, I probably quit in a couple weeks. So sell what you like sourcing and you'll be more likely to stick with it. So you figured out what you like to source, but does that make it valuable? Is it worth selling? Our next group of tips explains that that's really something you need to know. Uncle Bubba tells us to get to know the market, either vintage, books, seasonal, when to list, what list, supply up. Beaumont Picker states, just because it's older vintage doesn't mean it's worth money. I bought everything vintage when I first started over 20 years ago and wound up throwing half away quickly realize not everything old sells. Yankee Flipper states, check for sold and active comps as well as sell through rates. Always test electronics and record video of it working. The Thrifted Earth Shop says, don't buy brands just because you love them. This was a big one for them. So what do all these tips have in common? Basically do your research. See what the items you're looking at are actually selling for on whatever platform you're using. On eBay, you can actually do this on the mobile app. Just search for your item and take note of how many are for sale. Then filter to sold listings, which shows you what has actually sold in the past 90 days. This gives you a better idea of what things are actually selling for. Take note of number of the items that have sold as well. If you compare the number of items sold versus the number of items listed, you can also get an idea of how fast an item sells. This is called sell through rate. This is key because you don't want to hold onto an item forever. The object is to sell the item and get paid. So you've done your research and you bought a ton of great items. Now what? 1987 Ventures says she wishes someone would have told her that my house would quickly be transformed into a warehouse. This is so true. The Peachy Picker says, I wish I would have started with a better sorting system. Staying organized is so important. Also, how to ship the odd shapes and sizes without spending so much. More on shipping later. These two pieces of advice are very important. You need to start organizing as soon as you start selling. You can use bins, boxes, totes, shelves, whatever. But when you list an item, give it some kind of label or a name and use some type of inventory system that will help you find it when it sells. In eBay, you can use the custom label feature if you have an eBay store. This lets you put a custom identifier on the item and you can use that to label which bin box or tote the item is in. When it sells, just look at the custom label and you'll know right where it is. If you don't have an eBay store, you can just add it to the item description. Just don't put it in the title as that takes up precious keyword space you should fill up to help buyers find your items. One of the biggest excuses I hear for people not wanting to get into reselling is that they're afraid of shipping and I get it, it's daunting. There's so many different options and there's different shapes and sizes of items that you may be selling that it can be pretty scary. But our Instagram family had some advice for that too. Shiny Happy Nachos gives us great advice. Don't guess how much shipping will cost, especially as a beginner. Just buy a scale and a tape measure and save yourself the grief. They really hit the nail on the head with this one. Any mistakes you make by guessing on shipping cuts into your profit, and that can really add up. So go ahead and buy the scale and the tape measure. Another thing to look out for is what Pound of Everything recommends. Take advantage of all shipping services. In eBay, you can choose how you want to ship your items. There's USPS Priority, USPS First Class, there's FedEx, there's UPS, etc., etc. Now each one typically has their own set of rules, but a general rule of thumb is that larger items ship cheaper through FedEx and UPS. Smaller items typically do better through USPS, so keep that in mind. Also, play around in the drop menu when doing your shipping and compare rates. 
You can't change the way you're shipping the item after the sale because you already promised the buyer a certain way, but this is a good way to learn what to do for the next time you make a sale. The biggest resource you can use when it comes to shipping is YouTube. Just like you're doing now, take the time to watch other resellers and learn. There's a ton of shipping videos out there that really break down the ins and outs and what you need to know. So you figured out what you like to sell, you've done your research, and you at least have some concept of shipping. So what are you waiting for? Chris at Flip the World wishes he would have started sooner. Obviously there's no time machine to help with that, but what better time than now? Of course you're going to make mistakes. Even Virtually Sell It says that no matter how hard you try, you're going to miss a mark, tear, hole, or blemish that you'll only find when you're back home listing an item. Mistakes are part of any business. Just get started and I promise you'll learn quickly. Our final point comes from my buddy Chuck, Backroad Bitter. He wished that someone would have told him that reselling is like a drug. It becomes a part of your life that you can't give up. It controls your thoughts and dreams and changes the way you look at the world. While Chuck may be a little extreme here, I get it. I'm obsessed too. I mean, I'm basically a 40 year old man making weird YouTube videos about his job, but that's because I love it. And I think I can speak for all the other resellers that contributed to this that they love it too. And they want to share the love. So if you ever get stuck, Feel free to reach out on Instagram or leave a comment in one of my videos. We really do love to help. And if you enjoy reselling content like this and you actually got something out of this video, and I genuinely hope you did, consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on Tuesday with some items to be on the lookout for that you can resell. See ya.